Good morning all. I thought I'd give you a bit of an overview of my scheme to keep the Celica running without an alternator. We ordered an alternator and a week later it still wasn't there so we've had to do a lot of trips in the car um, using my jerry rig. And it's turned out to be a very successful jerry rig. This got us home the first night that the alternator failed. We limped home, mainly due to lack of charge in the batteries. But I made some modifications to the wiring, so I basically want to just show you my final system here. Okay. Or should we start at the front? Okay, we'll start at the front. Yeah. Our bonnet holder stick is sort of missing. Well, we've got it, but it just doesn't slot in properly, so I find it easier just to use a stick, but be that as it may. Anyway, here's our battery, our normal starter battery. And this is the wire, which I didn't show on the first video, connected to the battery, because it was too dark when we got home and we were too tired. Now, one of the modifications I've made, as you'll notice that this is these both these wires, this is a two-core cable, speaker cable, about 2.9 mil cross-sectional area per conductor are both paralleled onto the positive terminal of the battery. When we first brought the car home, this was connected to positive and this was connected to negative. And I'll explain why when we have a look in the back. So that's the only connection need to be made to the front. Of course the wire runs out of the bonnet through the door and luckily that doesn't crush it and cause a short circuit through the car. Why not? Okay. And through to the back, which is where the magic happens. And in the back. And this battery I bought the night of the day that the alternator failed is a 100 amp hour AGM deep cycle battery, which is what got us home. But in my improved setup, this is how I wired it. It's the circuit breaker I bought that night, still connected to the positive terminal. As you can see, both wires are parallel together out of there. This is a 32 amp AC circuit breaker, they work fine on DC. I have found. I should do a video on them. I should try and not digress when I make these videos. I should try and keep them concise, but anyway. And the other improvement, of course, was the negative terminal is now grounded directly to the car chassis through the seat bolt as it happens. So. Originally, of course, I had positive and negative from this battery sent via this cable up to the front, which caused too much voltage drop. Now we've effectively doubled the cross-sectional area of the positive conductor, and one can safely assume since that the negative is connected to the chassis, that's almost infinitely low. Well, it's almost as low as what the car battery will be connected to the front to the chassis. At any rate, much better than sending it down a relatively thin cable. These batteries here, haven't had to use them since I've re-rigged this. That was my primary like starting assist battery. If, if we got a bit low and, and the system couldn't turn the engine over, I was going to haul that out with jumper leads and jumper leads are down there. Start the car, then whip it back in and away we go. That one was a backup in case we had to do it a few times and that one got flat. But like I say, never had to use them. And this, my elderly Century 50 amp hour deep cycle battery, which I got with a house truck. I charged that up and put it in, along with an inverter to create my own sort of mobile power plant in case I needed to top up these batteries while I was out. Because yesterday we did a huge test of the system. We went into Palmerston North from Shannon in during the day, out at night, so we had to use the lights. Fortunately, it was a fairly good weather yesterday, so no need for demisturbs and wipers, which helps. And the voltmeter was showing 12.2 at the start of the trip, and 11.7 when we got back with the engine running. Lights off, so... That was really good. 
those are relative terms. I should explain more about the voltmeter. Let's have a look at the voltmeter. Oh, before we go, the charger. So every night I'd come home, I'd slap this charger on. It's got an 8 amp charging um, program there. It's only actually 8 amps when it's doing the, the bulk charge. As soon as it gets up to the... Um, and when it starts to get up towards an absorption stage, it uh, actually drops to default of about 2 amps, no matter what setting that's on. So that only affects the bulk, but anyway. And I just simply made up this cord here, so that I could shut it on the boot without risking any damage to the cord, which came with the charger. However, as it's happened, it's caused no damage, so that's all good, and I just have it plugged in to this extension cord here. It sits out over night overnight it's fully charged again ready to go the next day in fact it doesn't even take all night so there's the charger that's how I charged it circuit breaker was there for a bit of safety last sort of last minute thought when I was in J car but it never blew but it could be handy I've just left that on the whole time it just this battery just helps with starting the car and then it's just I've just left it on I haven't turned it off since we've had it rigged like this so I'll show you the voltmeter setup inside the car right key okay it's on fortunately the sun's not so bright we can actually see it so this is just a three-way cigarette lighter adapter plus a USB and I've just got it in this old phone holder that came with the car something I thought of yesterday actually and here's my wee voltmeter, this is why we kept saying it's like the DeLorean, because when you've got like seven segment displays, all of a sudden, you know. This could be a multiplex display, I'm not sure if you can see the voltage, but it's saying 12.7 there at the moment. Which is not bad considering the, the door's open and the ignition's on, that's a good um, voltage. There is a lot of voltage drop in this ignition wiring and um, stuff here, so that's not really the true voltage of the battery at all it'll be up in the 13s but it's it's a good indicator it's relative you know I could have bought one of those cigarette lighter plug-in um, voltmeters would be neater but I had this one on hand so I just wired it to a cigarette lighter plug shall we see if we can pull it out yep okay cigarette lighter plug cable tie voltmeter There we go. We'll probably leave this here like this now. Even when we go back to the alternator. Maybe I'll leave that little voltmeter there. Maybe I'll buy a proper one. Handy thing to have. Because we've got the voltmeter here. And this one is actually connected to a more sensible part of the circuit. And doesn't suffer the voltage drop when accessories around this ignition sort of fuse box internal area are being used. So that's basically my Dodge to allow the car to be run for well, just about a fortnight now without an alternator and still be able to go to the places that we went. Um, we went to a lot of different places in Palmy yesterday so we had to stop and start the car a number of times but it turned out in the end that wasn't a problem. So there we have it. That's how you can wire a car to deal with a dud alternator until you get one okay this video is starting to get quite long but there is just one more thought I want to leave you with here though I haven't done any scientific tests on this but it seems that since we've been running without an alternator we've actually been getting more um, kilometers to the litre for our fuel now this may be because while we've been in this mode we decided to upgrade the petrol to super rather than um, 91 just so that if things got marginal we had a little bit more grunt in the engine less likely to stall and stuff and that could have improved things as well of course super is more dear so you don't get as much petrol for your money but if it's works with your engine better you might get more kilometers for your dollar even though you've put in less liters for your dollar you know but that may be part of the 
reason why we're getting what appears to be a better mileage. However, I think the other reason is because we've got no alternator, oh, and here's the place where the alternator sits. As you can see, it's not there at all. There's the main connection to it, and there's the control connections there. So, what my theory is, is that because this is all running off a battery, this is very, very smooth DC. And this is an injected car, and I feel that perhaps the smooth DC has allowed the injectors and the ignition circuits just to run a little bit smoother and better, which may have helped improve fuel economy. I'll be watching this very closely once we put the alternator in and see if it drops down. I mean, I've heard of outfits selling banks of capacitors to wire into your car, not for improved subwoofers in your car audio, but they actually claim that one of the benefits is improved fuel economy due to smoother voltage in your electrical system. However, I wouldn't expect an alternator to be really, really rough, because after all, it's a three-phase device producing DC, so it's going to be a pretty smooth... Um, pulsating DC since you've got the three phase angles but be it as it may I think that's enough now you've got the idea you've, you've seen enough you could try this yourself if you have this problem if you want to go any serious distance you do need a serious decent deep cycle battery although it doesn't have to be a AGM that that one there probably would have done the job I mean at a push you could just have an additional standard starter battery or a couple in parallel in here if that's all you got but deep cycle is definitely the way to go this doesn't really start the car the original battery still does this just sort of helps run the car so there we go